Welcome. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us today, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or at, your, at our website. Um, please feel free to not only chime in and let us know that you are watching, but also click that share button so someone else can watch as well. And so now at this time, we have a special announcement from our pastor, Brother Dwayne. All right. Thank you, Pastor Will. It's so good uh, to be with you guys, even online this morning. Hopefully, this uh, over either yesterday or maybe even Friday, you received the letter uh, from the church from me about our uh, plans and reopening. And uh, one thing that uh, we want to share about a week ago, a little over a week ago, we sent out a letter looking at some dates in May, May 20th, May 24th. 
for reopening. Uh, after really praying about that and seeking the Lord, we felt like it would be wise for us here at Campbellsville Baptist Church just to wait a little bit longer, um, just to be safe. And really, there were three primary reasons for us. We, By the way, we consulted. It was not only the pastoral staff, but we also consulted with some lay leaders in our church um, just to, to get a feel of some of our church family. And so really there were three main reasons. The biggest reason, the main reason is because we just did not have a piece, a full piece about reopening on May 20th or May 24th. We want you to know that's a hard, that was a hard decision because nobody uh, wants to be together in person sooner than I do. Uh, I love to preach to a full uh, congregation, to a full church, not an empty church. And so, but we felt like that was the best decision for our church family. And we just didn't have a piece about reopening on May 20th or May 24th. Another reason, many of our volunteers fall into that 60 and above category that's considered to be uh, the at-risk category. And so we want to encourage you. Um, some of those are going to come back. Uh, some of those 60 and above are going to feel comfortable to come back and worship when we meet uh, in person, but some are not. And we completely understand that. We want people to feel comfortable when they feel comfortable to come back to church and worship in person. And so we need your help, church family. If you would be willing to help volunteer uh, when we do reopen, we would love for you to contact the church office uh, or contact me or Pastor Brad, Pastor Will, or Pastor Jeremy because we will need additional volunteers. And so this is an opportunity for those of us who do feel comfortable to come back and meet in person to volunteer in our church. Uh, we're looking at some dates in June for reopening, and we're prayerfully considering those dates. As soon as we nail those dates down, uh, we will communicate that information to you. So we want you to be aware. Hopefully you receive the letter in the mail. If not, you can go uh, online to our Facebook page, and we have the letter uh, there as well that you can read with more details. We do promise you this. We will continue to meet for worship online every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m., and we would love for you to continue joining us as we do that. So with all that being said, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's continue to worship him. Lord, we love you, and we trust you. God, you are good and you are good all the time. We pray, Lord, that you will prepare our hearts this morning to worship you, um, Lord, to worship you alone. We love you, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you will be honored and glorified by what is sung and by what is preached and by what is prayed today. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Blue. 
for the peace we have in this time. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless dark is dark but I am not forsaken for by my side the Savior he will stay I labor on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need his power is displayed you, to this I hope
will bring me home and day by day i know he will renew me until i stand with joy before the throne to this i hold my hope is only jesus all the glory evermore to him when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not i but through christ in me when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not i but through christ not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. us this morning. If you have your copy of God's Word, let me encourage you to turn to the New Testament, turn to 1 John. Turn to 1 John towards the end of the New Testament. We've been looking at our mission statement and what it looks like for us to be on mission with God even in the midst of a pandemic. And our mission statement here at Campbellsville Baptist Church is that Campbellsville Baptist Church seeks to develop kingdom-focused followers of Christ who gather, who grow, and who go. And this morning, we want to focus on that word, go. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we want to be a people who are on mission with God. So let's begin this sermon this morning with an example of how Campbellsville Baptist Church is seeking to be on mission. Watch this video with me. Hey, Campbellsville Baptist Church family. This is Tammy Grider, one of our church members, and I asked her to talk about our backpack ministry. So Tammy, tell us who does the backpack ministry at, uh, who does the backpack ministry serve? Uh, we serve about 25 families in our community. We get our uh, families from the schools in our, in our town, from Tuttle County Council Schools, and we have members of our church that deliver them on Wednesday nights. All right, and how can our church members actually help this ministry? Uh, you can donate food. There is always a list published somewhere in the spire or in a bulletin, and also you can make monetary donations. All right. Thank you, Tammy, so much. And thank you, church family, for supporting this great ministry and this opportunity for us to go and be on mission with Christ. Tammy, thank you so much. And all those who volunteer with the Backpack Ministry here at our church, I love how this ministry meets physical needs, but it also seeks to meet spiritual needs. And it's completely tied to the gospel, to the good news of Jesus Christ. This morning, as we consider going, we will learn the following. God commands his followers to love others in a sacrificial way in the same manner that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. This morning, we're going to notice three considerations from our text from 1 John 3, 16 through 18. Three considerations about love and how it relates to our going here at Campbellsville Baptist Church. So listen to the word of the Lord beginning in 1 John chapter 3, and I'm going to begin in verse number 11. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him." Now listen to verse 16. By this, 
we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. First this morning, I want to encourage you from the text to consider the great example of love. Consider the great example of love. We, there is no greater example of love than the love that has been displayed by Jesus Christ on the cross. Well, in the beginning of this, notice the contrast of this love. There's a strong contrast that John gives in verses 11 through 15. If you're looking for the greatest example of love, then again, we go no, no further than Jesus himself. But what we see in the text is that Christ's sacrificial love is contrasted with Cain's false love in verses 11 through 16. If you remember, the story of Cain is found in Genesis chapter 4. Cain and Abel were the sons of Adam and Eve. Cain murdered his brother Abel, and Cain killed Abel because God accepted Abel's offering and not his. Warren Wearsby says this, Cain is our example of false love, but Christ is our example of true love. Church, let, let's be very, very sure that we don't go looking for love in all the wrong places. Genuine love is seen and displayed here and exemplified in Christ Jesus. Secondly, not only do we see the contrast, we see the comprehension of this love. He says there in verse 16, by this we know love. The words there, we know, refer, refers to a knowledge that has been get, gained through diligent contemplation, almost through experience. And the word know here is in the tense, it's in the perfect tense. Perfect tense in the original language here in the Greek is action completed in the past, but there's ongoing future results. Uh, Danny Aiken says the perfect tense here emphasizes a historical encounter with Christ. We know, by this we know love, there's, there's this historical encounter with Christ, but that there's ongoing results that completely affect one's personal life right now and moving forward into the future. So, John says, by this we know love. And then thirdly, we see the commitment of this love in verse 16. He says, by this we know love that he laid down his life for us. This tells us that Christ's love is sacrificial. It's self-sacrificial. He laid down his life. This is language that is unique to John, but not only do we see it here in 1 John, but we see the same language in John's gospel from the words of Jesus, from, his, from the mouth of Jesus. We see it again in John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. We're not going to take time to read all these passages, but you see it in John chapter 13, verses 37 and 38, and then you see it again in John chapter 15, verse 13. In John 10, 11 through 18, notice what Jesus says. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and here's that language again, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there we will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life. So there again, we see that language where Jesus sacrifices himself. But then notice the language of the resurrection, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord, and I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. So we see in the text this language where Jesus sacrifices himself is the greatest example of love ever. And the greatest possible expression of love 
without a doubt, church, is seen in Christ's willingness to lay down his life on behalf of others. It's self-sacrificial, but his sacrifice is also substitutionary. Did you notice the language there? He said, lay down his life for us. Literally, it means on behalf of us. Christ died on the cross as a substitute for sinners. And God imputed the guilt of our sins to Christ. And he, in our place, Jesus in our place, bore the punishment that we deserve. This was a full payment for sins, which satisfied both the wrath and the righteousness of God so that he could forgive sinners without compromising his own holy standard. And before we go any further this morning, we have to ask the question, has there ever been a time in your life where you have trusted this Jesus for salvation? The Jesus, this Jesus who sacrificed his own life on the cross, who laid down his life and he did it for us. Have you ever trusted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you ever confessed him? Have you ever repented and turned away from your sins and turned to this Jesus by faith? We encourage you to do that. If you've never trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we encourage you to do that. And if you have, then rejoice that he laid down his life for us. So we see the great example of this love, but secondly in the text, we see the great exhortation to love. Look at verse 16 again. For by this we know love, that Jesus, that he laid down his life for us, and here we go, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. The conjunction there, and, unites Christ's example of love with his followers' actions that prove love. We ought to, the language there indicates that we have a moral obligation to imitate Christ's love for us by loving others. In other words, obviously we cannot atone for the sins of others. We can't do that. Only Christ could do that. The point is this, Christ's example of sacrificial love, though, is one for us as followers of Christ to imitate. We should be loving others in the same manner that Jesus loved others, in that he gave his life, he sacrificed his life. And if you think about it, there's a beautiful correlation between John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16 is a demonstration of love. But 1 John 3, 16 in our text this morning is an explanation of love. John 3, 16 says that God gave his son for us. 1 John 3, 16 says that we should be willing to give of ourselves to others. Church, the fact of the matter is this. If you want to see love, look at the cross. You have to go no further than looking at the cross of Jesus Christ. Seeing Jesus' outstretched arms on a cross is the, beautiful, the most beautiful and perfect picture of love that the human race has ever seen. And if you want to show love to others, look at the cross. Look at the cross of Jesus Warren Wearsby said this, self-preservation is the first law of physical life, but self-sacrifice is the first law of spiritual life. And if you think about it, we tend to excel in self-preservation. We tend to excel in taking care of ourselves. But the fact of the matter is, is that God has called us as followers of Christ to imitate his son Jesus who laid down his life for us and the way to do that is by self-sacrifice. That is the first law of spiritual living. The believer who will lay down their lives for the brothers is willing to give. Listen to this. They're willing to give of their time. They're willing to give of their treasure. And they're willing to give of their talents, both selflessly and sacrificially. And so the question that I want to ask you this morning is, how are you practically seeking to love others? How are you practically and sacrificially seeking to love others? I, mean, I want to encourage you, watch this video this morning 
with me of a family in our church that's seeking to love others in a very practical way. This video is of Jay and Miranda Wright and their family that live out in the social band community, and they are, they're, they've put together what the Lord's placed on their heart is a mobile food pantry. So watch this video with me. Good morning, church family. This is Jason Wright. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about the recent mission my family and I started out on Social Band Road. The idea of a food pantry, which is what we began, was something that I had never heard of until recently one of the school systems started a blessings box and then on the news there were several um, pantry boxes that were in, in certain neighborhoods around the state. I found the idea very interesting and I felt almost called to to look more into it. After COVID-19 started, um, there was an incredible amount of worry and anxiety and fear from everyone about the future of the economy and the future of all of our health. Um, so my wife and I just discussed it, we prayed about it, and uh, we decided to go forward with building a pantry box. The, uh, the building process of it was very fun. Uh, we involved my son, who's eight, and our daughter, who's three, and um, there was a lot of moments where I could feel God working while I was building it. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not a builder. I'm in health care. Uh, I, I could probably show you some deer stands that I've built, and they are not square at all. And um, my wife could tell you that this is a God thing because I, I did some uh, handiwork and didn't get hurt. So that, that in and of itself is a, is a miracle. Um, but certain things, whenever I was building it, I would reach over and find a board that, and this is numerous times, I, I would reach over and just find what I needed at that point in time and wouldn't even have to cut anything. Um, a very rewarding experience to, to spend with my family that I didn't foresee even being um, uh, happening. The, uh, if I'm honest, the pantry box scared my wife and I a little bit about, you know, getting something started like this and, you know, what lie ahead for us and, and our family and uh, would we be able to stock something like this and afford it uh, down the road and um, it's been a, a quite a blessing to see the community and you know on my road and and the community in Taylor County really um, approach me from different avenues about putting food in and it was it's, it's all, always a, a very big heartwarming experience whenever someone keeps asking me about the, the pantry box. Um, I've had numerous people, people I don't even know, bring food out. Um, I've learned a lot from the process of, of being, being obedient to the Holy Spirit, to what God's spoken to me um, about doing. Um, I've learned faithfulness, I've learned love, and uh, to have an attitude of gratitude, and um, like I said, the reward I have gotten from this blessings box, it's right there or outweighs the good the blessings box has done already, and that what I've gained in my heart. Uh, it was started as a mission to, to basically share Christ's love with those who are in need, and um, that's all it was. It wasn't for notoriety. It wasn't for, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing, or anything like that. It was just, I wanted to do something, and my family wanted to do something. And, um, but you know, listening to the sermons that Brother Duane has, has preached the last year, he spoke a lot about being obedient to the Holy Spirit and listening to what God's saying to us and um, a lot of self-examination on my part has taken place and I realized that the relationship I've had with God I do most of the talking and I don't do much of the listening 
so this has been a process for me that I've been able to um, grow in Christ myself through through trying to be the hand and feet of, of Jesus. Uh, my hope is that my church family and the rest of the community they start listening and uh, do less talking with God. I want, I want I think you should pray and I think you should talk to God, but I'm saying that you should listen more as well. I think that a lot of us are probably guilty of of that one-sided relationship with him. Um, I can't even begin to explain to you the the rewards in my heart that I've gained. So I, I, it's, there's a lot out there as far as um, finding a lot of joy in giving and a lot of joy in being the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, I'm not a saint. I'm not. I'm not perfect. I'm not close to it at all. Uh, but I think you you'll see in the Bible that there's a lot of imperfect people that God used, and I think this is a prime example of that. Um, church family, my family and I, we miss you all dearly. We can't wait to see you. Um, just remember, we love you, God loves you, and he's rooting for us all. Thank you. I think we've got some pictures here of the mobile food pantry and the social band community. One thing that I wanted to share with you that uh, Jay was, you know, he said, Pastor, I don't want to come across like we're bragging. And, of course, we don't look at it that way. They're just trying to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a very, very practical way. By the way, there are tons of more examples in our church family that, that we could give this morning where you guys are seeking to be on mission, where you're seeking to be the hands and feet of Jesus and meet physical needs, but also meet people's greatest need, which is their need for Jesus Christ. You may be asking, Pastor, how can I lay down my life for someone else? And the fact of the matter is we only lay down our life for someone else by serving others with no thought of receiving anything in return. That's what Jesus did for us, and that's what we must be willing to do for others. Thirdly and finally this morning, let's consider the great extent of love. Look at verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Here's the crux of the matter. I would die for you sounds very noble, very spiritual. And I'm glad that you're willing to die for me, but would you simply give me something to drink or eat? Maybe an extra shirt or a jacket. Could you let me sleep on your couch until I get back on my feet? Or could you help me with an electric bill or help pay for some prescriptions? You see, I don't necessarily need you to die for me. I just need a little help. And so what we see here in verses 17 and 18 is that John gets intensely practical. And in doing so, he provides some basic and real advice about love in the context of everyday living. Two things. Number one, don't be selfish with your material possessions. That's what John is encouraging us here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Don't be selfish. If anyone has the world's good and sees his brothers in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? And the scenario is this. You've been blessed by God and you have resources and you encounter someone specifically here the text speaks about a brother or a sister in need, brother or sister in Christ, and you have the means to meet that need. However, instead of meeting that need, you deliberately and hard-heartedly walk away from the needy brother or sister. And John asks a rhetorical question to that type of scenario. How can the love of God be in that person? Someone once said, John knows that the heart controls the hands. A closed heart will always result in closed hands and is evidence that your heart has never been opened by the key of the gospel of God's grace poured out through Jesus Christ. James 
uh, 2, 15, and 17, James used some of the same language. The half-brother of Jesus was concerned about the exact same thing. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, is that if it does not have works, is dead. Don't be selfish with your material possessions. And secondly, don't be satisfied with your simple profession. Notice what he said in verse 18. Little children, that's common language that John uses in First and Second John. It's, you can hear the intimacy, the relationship, the love that John had for these people. Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. John's exhortation here is expressed in a negative way and in a positive fashion. Negatively, he insists, let us not love in word or talk. The idea is this, love is so much more than making a good speech. John's not condemning, kind, forgiving, comforting, loving words. However, he's saying we need to speak loving words We don't need to speak loving words and not back it up with practical needs. If we're not serving others, then truly our words are nothing but hot air. And in a positive way, John insists that love is to be demonstrated in actions and in truth. Love expresses itself in deed, but it also notices genuine love is demonstrated with the right motive as well. You do it in love and in truth. So what have we learned this morning from the text? God commands his followers to love others in a sacrificial way, in the same manner that Christ Jesus laid down his life for us. As I close this morning, I want to be really transparent before you. As I studied this passage this week, it became very obvious that the context here is speaking specifically about loving brothers and sisters in Christ. However, without a doubt, the application is easily made that as followers of Christ, we are called to love brothers and sisters in Christ, and we are called to love those who are not in Christ. We're called to love unbelievers. Yet we cannot escape the context here this morning, church, And so I began to think, well, God, are you calling me to a different passage? Are you calling me to specifically preach a passage that deals with going to unbelievers? And I really believe God led me to this passage for a reason. Campbellsville Baptist Church has endured much over the years. It's not necessary for me to go back over our short history or our long history or even the last few years. But we've had some great trials, haven't we? And difficulties to say the least. And something that God has placed on my heart is this. If we cannot love one another in the church as we must. Then we will never love those outside the church as we should. If I cannot properly love my brother and sister as commanded clearly in scripture. How in the world will I ever love those outside the church? Therefore... Until we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, we will never go and make disciples together as we're commanded to do so by God himself in Scripture. So I ask you two questions as I close this morning. Number one, who in the church has God placed on your heart that you need to call today and express love towards? Who in the church has God placed on your heart today that you need to call and express love towards? I'm asking you to check your heart. I truly believe God placed this on my heart for a reason. If you're right with God and you're right with your brothers and sisters in Christ, then praise God. I encourage you to pray for our church. But if you're not right with others, then listen to me. You are not right with God And let me encourage you to make a phone call this afternoon. Who in the church has God placed on your heart that you need to call today and express love towards? And then secondly, who outside the church has God specifically placed upon your heart? How can you practically love that person today? Pray with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for how practical your word is. We thank you, Lord, for how challenging your word is. 
And I pray, Lord, that we will consider those two areas this morning. Who have you placed on our heart that's in this church that maybe we need to make a phone call to this afternoon to express our love towards? Maybe to ask forgiveness. Until we nail down how to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, we will never be effective in reaching those outside the church with the love of Jesus Christ as we should. And then secondly this morning, those who are watching, those who are listening, Lord, would you remind us of our ones, our, our family members, our neighbors, our classmates, extended family members that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, help us to love them enough to serve them and to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to encourage you this morning. First, if you don't know Christ, we've got some pastors that are in the chat rooms there, and you can reach out to those pastors. They would love to talk to you how you can know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And then secondly, as already been mentioned, consider those two questions. Who do you need to reach out to in the church today if God's placed that on your heart to express love towards? And then secondly, the second question, who outside the church do you need to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with and serve today? Let's continue to worship the Lord Jesus together. It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours And I will sing Of your goodness forevermore Worthy is your name
as your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names, be exalted now in the heavens as your glory. out today with a song that echoes what we heard from Brother Dwayne, and that is we are called to love and to serve our kingdom, our community, our families, our church. So we pray this song you will sing out loud with us as your commitment to hearing the call of the kingdom. Kingdom, lift your eyes to the King. Let His song rise in, in you as a fragrant offering of how God, rich in mercy, came. 